The dawn of the jet engine age marked a transformative moment in human history. It was an era when the limits of propulsion were shattered and the skies became a realm of unprecedented speed and power. The birth of the jet engine can be traced back to the pioneering work of Sir Frank Whittle and Hans von Ohain, who independently developed the concept of a gas turbine engine in the 1930s. Their groundbreaking inventions paved the way for the first operational jet engines which propelled aircraft to previously unimaginable velocities. According to Anselm Franz, the man most responsible not for designing the first jet engine but for leading the project that would develop the first practical employment of one. The moment of start of jet age occurred when a small group of people gathered in leap time to witness the first flight of the Messerschmitt Me 262. The Messerschmitt Me 262 was the first operational jet fighter powered by the first operational production turbojet engine, the Yonkers UMO 004. And today, in this video, we are going to look at the story behind the production of this groundbreaking engine. Two men, Sir Frank Wittel in England and Hans von Ohain in Germany, are credited with inventing the quantum leap forward and increasing aircraft speed. Both people see fighters traveling at speeds in excess of 500 miles per hour and at heights in excess of 30,000 feet, and both began work on their separate jet engines without assistance from existing aero engine businesses. Hans von Ohain developed the concept for the first jet engine as a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg, and he had conducted preliminary calculations proving that flying speeds of more than 500 miles per hour were achievable. He was finally introduced to Ernest Heinkel, the famed aircraft constructor who was also concerned with the possibility of high-speed flying. Ohayan was contracted by Heinkel to construct a working jet engine with the need that ground test commence within a year. Heinkel kept his work hidden from the German air ministry, the Luftwaffe, and the other engine makers, although it is thought that the part of the reason was to keep him from working with Willy Messerschmitt. Heinkel ultimately completed his first engine, the HES-1, which ran on hydrogen fuel and was successfully tested in March of 1937. Six months later, the HES-2A would achieve 1100 pounds of thrust and eventually in 1938, the HES-178 was developed. It took to skies on August 27, 1939, a few days before the World War II has begun and was powered by the HES-3B turbojet. The most essential element here is that prior to the outbreak of the World War II, Germany possessed jet-powered aircraft capable of flight. This suggests that the Luftwaffe might have wrecked havoc if turbojet development had evolved faster. Frank Wittel had been working on his jet for the same amount of time as Van Ohayan, but the W1X would not fly until the mid-1941, giving Germany a three-year head start. This demonstrates that the Luftwaffe could have wrecked havoc if turbojet manufacture had proceeded more swiftly. When Heinkel eventually notified them about Hans von Ohain's work on the jet engine, the German Air Ministry ordered him to stop all the research on jet engines. Heinkel declined instead of instructing Ohain to continue his job. A few months later, the Air Ministry accepted Heinkel's proposal for the HE280, but the project was abandoned by mid-1943. The HES-8A was likewise shelved in favor of new jet engine programs at Yonkers and BMW, despite the fact that Heikel and Ohain had achieved multiple world firsts. The main engine manufacturer's strength and influence persuaded the German Air Ministry into handing them the most lucrative contracts. Under the direction of Hubert Wagner, the Yonkers airplane manufacturer began work on their own jet engine in 1938. Helmut Schell and Hans Mark, two engineers from the German Air Ministry, got interested in jet technology and initiated talks with the well-known engine manufacturer of the time. Schell and Mark ultimately convinced the president of Junkers Aero Engine firm to appoint Anselm Franz to supervise the project that would eventually build the Junkers UMO 004. However, there were two Yonkers companies, the Yonkers Aeroplane firm which had begun work on their own jet and the Yonkers Aero Engine company which was unaware of the jet development until Shell asked them to make one. 
unsurprisingly, many of the company's engineers felt betrayed and resigned and began working for Heinkel in protest. Franz began work on his number four concept by building a full experimental engine rather than constructing individual engine components. The objective was to develop a working engine without regard for design restrictions such as weight or strategic materials which would become the UMO 004A. Once the engine was working satisfactory, they would address those limits in the development of the UMO 004B. Franz was well versed in the creation of centrifugal type compressors but he created an axial type jet instead. The design, which was based on the work of the Getagon Aerodynamic Research Institute, had a peak efficiency of 82% and an operational efficiency of 75 to 78%. The engine's combustor was constructed as six independent burner cans and reached maximum speed in January 1941. In August of 1941, the resultant stator design was altered to yield 1320 pounds of thrust with the assistance of Max Pentel. In December 1941, the engine's greatest test run generated 2200 pounds of thrust. The engine was initially flown on the testbed ME110 on March 15, 1941 and was eventually fitted on the first ME262 in July. Because the 004A was not meant to limit the use of strategic materials, the B model made considerable use of air cooling and hollow air cooled stator vans. The 004B was 220 pounds lighter than the A model, but after a few engine tweaks, an unexpected issue arose. The 4B was troubled by turbine blade failures in the summer of 1943, although the cause was suspected to be natural resonance of the blades. Max Wentel contributed to the solution by identifying the sixth order excitation as a result of the six combustor cans and the second harmonic of the three struts downstream of the rotor. The turbine blades were extended by 1 mm and the engine speed was decreased from 9000 to 8700 rpm to compensate. After these flaws were rectified and manufacturing was stepped up, the 004E would be the final UMO for design producing 2640 pounds of thrust at the conclusion of the war. The UMO 004 was an axial turbojet engine designed to use as few key elements as feasible. It measured 152 inches long and 30 inches in diameter. The intake was 20 inches in diameter and the round nose gallon housed two annular style petrol tanks. The upper three quarter gallon tanks held fuel for the 10 horsepower two cylinder two stroke horizontally opposed gasoline radial starter engine. The UMO 004's compressor component was an eight stage system comprised of eight aluminium discs connected together by 12 bolts with 27 stamped aluminium blades in the first two rows and 28 blades in the remaining rows. Each blade had a machine root that fit precisely into a pyramid shaped slot in the rotor disc and cooling air was admitted to the double skin around the combustion chamber assembly from the fourth and fifth compressor stages. The UMOS combustor was made up of six similar cans grouped around a central casing. To achieve good mixing and a short flame length in the chambers, combustion air was swirled as it entered the chamber and fuel was injected with an opposing swirl. The UMOS exhaust nozzle included a moving bullet located in the tailpipe that was controlled by a servo motor and worked as a throttle, while a rack and pinion system moved the bullet longitudinally. During ground operation, the nozzle was fully forward whenever the engine was running at less than 50% rpm, fully back between 50 and 90% rpm and even further back in flight over 20,000 feet at 400 miles per hour to produce maximum output. The servo motor driving the bullet was also attached to a capsule enclosed by atmospheric pressure and containing ram air pressure. Both the ME262 and the Arado 234 were powered by UMO 004 engines. Their performance was remarkable when compared to competitors with a top speed of 520 to 540 miles per hour. The concept began in 1938 when the German Air Ministry gave Willy Messerschmitt a design contract for a radial jet fighter. The final design incorporates two engines in a tailwheel undercarriage and the landing gear has been altered to fold into fuselage giving the 262 a more triangular form. In 1941, the Humor 004 was the world's first jet it had an inconceivable 
peak speed advantage of 70 to 100 miles per hour. The 262's difficulty, however, was not the aircraft itself, but rather the leadership. Adolf Galland, a Luftwaffe ace, began proposing that all fighter production be limited, but Hitler pushed on converting the ME262 to a bomber. This contradicting opinion resulted in manufacturing delays and a reduction in the Luftwaffe capacity to make substantial pushback in the war for air dominance. Another aircraft that used the Humor 004 engine was the Arado AR-234, the world's first jet bomber, which were designed in 1941. The AR-234B was an all-metal, single-seat, high-wing aircraft powered by two Humor 004 turbojets. It had a peak speed of 420 miles per hour, a range of 1,000 miles, and a payload of 3,300 pounds. The Arado was another weapon that might have inflicted havoc on the Allies had there been enough German manufacturing remaining by the end of the war. The U-004 was also selected to be used in the Ju-287 four-engine bomber, but the project never materialized. After the war, the Russians began to use the engine that powered the Yak-15, Yak-17, and Sukhoi-9. The Yonkers Yumo 004 was the only engine that had been tested, constructed, and put into production at the time. Ansel and Franz accomplished this by focusing on more conservative performance and practical technical goals rather than chasing their most irrational engineering aspirations. Franz chose the more responsible path and thereby created history. The dawn of the jet engine age marked a transformative moment in human history, propelling us into the realm of unprecedented speed and power. Thanks to the visionary mind of Wittel and Wans Ohayan, the first operational jet engines revolutionized the aviation industry. From the historic flight of the Messerschmitt ME262 to the remarkable engineering behind the Umo 004 engine, the jet engine age opened up a future of limitless possibilities and forever changed the way we travel and explore. Thanks for watching. I have more similar videos on my channel that you may like. See you guys in the next video.